Welcome. Today we'll be speaking on the topic of technology of tea processing, which falls under the topic of the course in technology of plantation crops as an MSc for technology second semester program. I'm Dr. Baby Zaitan Pui, an assistant professor from you know, Mizoram University. Let's begin with the introduction. Tea, we all know the scientific name is Camellia sinensis as written here, and tea is consumed widely in the world as a as a beverage and many people enjoy drinking it because it has a various cooling effect and it's slightly bitter and the astringent flavor um, is the reason why we consume tea and we know that um, India is one of the highest tea consumer in the world and among five major countries which produce tea we can say are China, India, Sri Lanka, Kenya and Indonesia. So these five countries account for around 77% of the world production and around 80% of the global exports. India produces 23% of the total pro world production, that is around a quarter of the total world production, and consumes around 21% of the total world consumption. That means it consumes almost 80% of what we actually produce. So we have high um, tea drinkers in the country because, let's see, Let's start with the history of tea again. Uh, let's, it goes way back in around 1500 to 1000 BC as a medicinal drink and it started from the province of Yunnan in China. Then the earliest credible record of tea drinking dates to around uh, 200 to 300 AD, that is around the 3rd century AD. Then tea was introduced to other parts of the world from China uh, to the Portuguese and Britain during the 17th century. From there, it travels from the east to the west. <coughs> and it takes thousands of years to know this knowledge of tea. And in India, around 1835, East India Company started. And the first tea plantation was done in Assam. And the first tea from Indian soil uh, was sold out three years later after its plantation in the year 1838 and from then we are still blooming and India is still increasing its production and uh, from 1856 we can see that Darjeeling plant and this uh, tea is also planted in other parts of the country and mainly in Darjeeling so it's been almost 200 years that we have started uh, producing tea. Now the chemistry of tea, why tea is loved by many and why we are drinking tea because it contains a lot high amounts of antioxidants, many um, phenols which are um, bioactive compounds which uh, which have ha high health benefits uh, such as catechins found in green tea in a very high amount and also other polyphenols which we have in black tea and later on we will see the difference of gr green tea and black tea which are mainly uh, which in which processing mainly plays the role why these catechins why these polyphenols are different from green tea and black tea but mainly we can see high content of bioactive components in both the tea and we can see that in among the minerals as we go down among the minerals there is potassium which is um, one of the uh, high um, mineral content in tea potassium uh, we can see that uh, potassium is also very good in maintaining fluid uh, our body fluids so uh, it is very good for our nervous our nerve and our nerve our brain as a stress relief and all kinds of metabolic activity which is good for our health Let's see the difference in green tea and black tea. And the previous slides I have mentioned that catechins are high in green tea, whereas we find a little bit lesser amount in black tea. And the, the uh, complex polyphenols like the theoflavins and theorobigins are found in higher in black tea and we find a little bit lesser amount in green tea whereas for flavanols that means the taste, the astringent effect, the bitter taste is similar in both green tea and black tea. We have tea compounds which are divided by its chemical classes. We have eight classes in total. Let's, uh, let's see the first one which is polyphenol. Polyphenol, it represents around 30 to 40 percent weight by weight of the extract solids. First, let me say uh, that uh, tea, tea leaf, a whole tea leaf contains around, fresh whole tea leaf contains around, around 
25 to 30 percent of solid and around 65 to 75 percent of water so when i'm speaking about uh, the extract solids we should remember that i'm speaking about those 25 to 30 percent solids the polyphenols are provides the astringency that is the taste where that uh, the drying sensation experience in the mouth after consumption of tea example of those polyphenols are catechins gallocatechins tannins flavanols theaflavins and and many other more now the second um, tea compounds is caffeine and and other related compounds we have we consume caffeine um, for the purpose of uh, bestowing our mood that means for purpose of relaxing for uh, to re to release the stress and also it has a you know, this caffeine is also used as a cognitive enhancer that means um, uh, for pro um, for proper blood supply to our brain uh, so it is a, it has a very good effect on our uh, blood streams and also if, provides good amount of blood to our brain and it is also used as a uh, what is it as a meditative or as a stress reliever and caffeine we have around two to five percent in tea and it ranges depending up the, upon its variety different kinds of tea have different ranges of caffeine now the third one is protein and amino acids it is a nitrogenous compound of tea and proteins in tea just such as Tea proteins we call them it's simple as that and peptides and amino acids it contributes significantly to the composition of tea leaves that means a high amount we can see there's almost 12 percent weight by weight by weight of the extracted solids are proteins and amino acids now the fourth one is carbohydrates pectins and fiber in the previous one we have seen around 77 percent of sugar content in our in this in tea because uh, sugar later on when in the process of fermentation in the process of uh, rolling and we'll be speaking about that in that one we we need the carbohydrates we need sugar to for the molecules to break down from glucose to other molecules so that it will be easy for consumption so we can see that we also have a carbohydrates pectins and other fiber co together constitute around 11 to 11 percent weight by weight of the extract solids the fifth one fifth one is organic acids and vitamin c tea is a significant source of oxalic acid along with citric isocitric succinic acids these acids are all important in the pro well for our digestion and for our metabolic activity in the stomach so and we can also see that the high amount of vitamin c uh, in the form of ascorbic acid can be detected in both green and black tea the fifth the, uh, the sixth uh, chemical compound is lipids, chlorophylls, carotenoids and related compounds. When we say related compounds, what we should remember is that there are minor traces of related compounds which are in this class, which may, which may or may not have an effect, but uh, we cannot avoid or we cannot just neglect them. But we, when I say related compounds, that means the uh, percentage of pre their percentage of and uh, this one content may be slightly lesser as um, comparative to, to those uh, mentioned in the previous ones like lipids chlorophylls and carotenoids now this main pigments uh, in fresh leaves are chlorophylls and carotenoids and we know that the flavor and the the flavor and the color of tea is mainly responsible for these compounds so when we have when we ferment the leaf chlorophyll um, get converted into another chemical which which produce around which produce slightly brown to black color so that's why we have because of these pigmented uh, uh, these pigmented bioactive compounds we can have a colored tea or in the form of green tea we'll be speaking about that when we speak about the processing okay why green tea is green why a black tea is black even though the same content of chlorophyll and carotenoids are there so we'll be speaking in the processing stage so let's go to the uh, second last one which is a minerals uh, we, as i've earlier mentioned that we have many types of minerals in found in tea the highest which is potassium and potassium uh, it is good for maintaining fluid balance of fluid in the body and it is also used for treating uh, good for having um, and uh, for clearing kidney stone it is also even used uh, for uh, 
this stroke heart stroke okay because it maintains the fluid balance in our body so even while we are even drinking green tea even drinking black tea any form of tea can also provide a lot of minerals to our body um, and then the final one is aroma aroma we, it's mainly responsible for the smell and we people we drink tea because of the smell because of the aroma and the flavors in it and the, per, the fermentation process um, is responsible for mainly for the aroma of tea so yeah, again we'll be speaking on that when we we'll speak about the processing means how much of aroma it has to be maintained during those fermentation process so that the exact um, tea as we want it as we desire can be uh, accomplished during the process so now coming to the processing of tea the, this uh, this uh, this part is we are slowly going right from the production then from its uh, chemical compounds now we can go to the processing of tea now we can see as i've earlier mentioned as a solid matter that means uh, the solid extract is around 23 to 26 percent and if this is a this this data this ranges it varies from one leaf to another or from one production place from from many regions have different um and different variety and they have different properties okay so we cannot fix exactly so we can may say we can take an average of around 25 percent solid matter and around uh, 75 percent of uh, moisture in tea that means in fresh tea leaves now about half of the solid matter is insoluble in water that means about half of this 25 percent is insoluble in water because it consists of cellulose lignin and lipids which are um, not easily digestible in our body as well now the water soluble compounds in the solid matter it, it are those phenolic compounds which we had talked about those catechins those proteins those pigments other pigments various types of phenols are there which are also water soluble and also those antioxidative compounds such as polyphenol oxidase and per peroxidase now in the form of tea uh, in the processing of tea from its leaf enzymatic oxidation reaction leads to the formation of theaflavin and polymetric theorubigins this two um, this two uh, polyphenol we can say theaflavin and theorubigins um, are produced in the pro uh, while we are while we are in the process of uh, fermentation that means when there's an enzymatic oxidation so this leads to the formation of these two very important uh, uh, polyphenols we can say tf which is a short form of tf lavin tf it gives a tea a, qu a quality of brightness briskness freshness and aliveness and too much tf too much tf lavin makes the tea soft and flat so now we can say another one this Theorubigins TR are dark brown color molecules responsible for the depth of color and for the richness of color. The, the quality of tea are mainly uh, measured according to the scale of how much tea of lavin and how much theorubigins are, con con are contained in it. Some catechins are also made, are remains it remains unoxidized during the processing of tea, which contributes to the astringency and bitterness of tea that means this compounds remain as it is that many compounds doesn't change from one form to another these compounds remain as it is which contributes to the flavor that is astringency and bitterness of tea let's speak for the main unit operate unit operations in tea processing we have six operations main one first one with withering plucking withering rolling fermentation firing grading and then packaging now let's talk about it one by one in general we can see the cycle of tea production process this first one here goes plucking plucking uh, it that means picking around two leaves and a bud from one particular plant and from there we go to the next process which is withering here withering we remove the moisture as much as possible and then we go to the next cycle that is third one the rolling it put leaves into roller machines and it twists and turn and then break it now the fourth one is oxidation leaf is oxidized by exposing it to air that means exposing it to oxygen and then it till eventually turns black we have this process then after oxidation we stop this process by drying that is also called firing in other process leaf is exposed to hot air in hot air in from air blowers so then this dried tea leaves are then packed are graded and then packed now 
this process has to be looked in, in detail one by one. We can see that in the, in the left corner, there are some photographs of a lady picking up some tea leaves and some other plucking tools of tea leaves. And using these form in my manual or by machinery, we have we performed this operation, which is plucking and also called as picking. And we, as I've earlier mentioned, we used to take around one butt or two plus butt, three plus butt, and which are detached either using the form of hand or any other machine. Now, after plucking, what is important is that there's this anabolic reaction, it stopped and the catabolic reaction started. That means complex compounds have started, um, have started reducing into uh, simpler compounds, okay, in catabolic reaction. That means all the other, other process, it stops. As soon as we pluck them out from their parent plant. Now, energy provides energy provides for the uh, energy pro is provided for this type of reactions to occur as soon as after plucking by those sugar content in it we have high amount of sugar as i have earlier mentioned around seven percent of sugar so those sugar helps in providing energy for breaking down all those complex compounds into simpler compounds and this um, sugar of uh, um, sugar that main that is the glucose content in it we can say it is also breaking bro um, broken down into carbon dioxide and water now too much leaf should not be held in the pluckers and while picking one important information is that at once we should not pick too much leaf in our hand so, uh, and then we should uh, provide uh, surplus amount of oxygen uh, for those uh, for those sugar to react and also uh, for this heat or the energy or those exothermic reaction we can say to smoothly escape we should not pack them too tightly or we should not hold them too closely then these harvested leaves should be stored in a condition having sufficient air space as i have mentioned and leaves should not get bruised because if those leaves get bruised then then there's another problem which we can face in the later stages of processing so that means careful handling should be done from the first operation itself second one withering withering is the process of spreading leaves those tea leaves thinly on the rack of sh or shelves or even people do it on the floor on the ground on a clean surface to dry those leaves then we allow till the moisture content of that leaf to lower it almost half that means around 40 percent we allow those leaves to, re to reduce its moisture its water content from them and then when the moisture in the leaf is lowered to almost half it is considered ready for the next operation withering general that means it is to dry the surface moisture almost half of it in a flat or clean surface the leaf becomes flaccid and assumes a velvety appearance that means the the, the stiffness or the rigidness of the leaves has become uh, a bit loosened and it and, and some velvety appearance have come which makes it ready for the next operation it is necessary to continue supply sufficient air and wait for the breakdown of large organic molecules to simple structures now the greenish color reduces slowly during this time during this withering process and the process of, of change from chlorophyll to um, pheophytins by oxidation also started from this stage increase in total car carotenoids during weathering uh, that means uh, there is an increase in the carotenoids which is one of the uh, phenol phenolic compounds as we have mentioned and initial drying of bruise or torn leaf break down the leaf to liberate juices uh, in the earlier stage as i have mentioned in plucking stage we should not bruise our leaves because in this process of withering those they liberate juice and which spoils or we can say which um, hampers the process the entire process of tea so we should um, we should ha handle them carefully can them pro handle them properly so that then the, the we have a high quality of leaf of tea leaves now the third process is rolling after plucking withering then we come to rolling rolling we have uh, three main methods of rolling or we can say uh, that this first one is orthodox non-cutting rollers ctc crush tail curl cutting roller and the third one is lorry t processor ltp hammer mill type cutter there are also many other types of rollers available in the market but these three types are the main common ones which are used now this withered tea leaf is fed into a roller where the tea leaves um, tea leaves are broken and it releases the juices and the enzymes so after those withered that means those soft and those um, 
partially dried leaves are put in the roller uh, they are broken into uh, they are broken in and it did release some juices enzymes which will help in the process of fermentation again so all these process ha are are having this relation from uh, one another and we can see that in this rolling already the fermentation process starts as we have seen it release enzyme so those enzymes are the re ones responsible for fermentation process in the rolling process the leaf it gives a characteristic twist and the various techniques uh, are also performed while doing rolling so we, if you are interested in that we can look up into the net and we can see those different types of rolling techniques are, um, used in uh, ro while rolling our tea leaves okay so we need a little bit of skill labor here as well for rolling of tea and mm, there is a saying that this manual hand rolling uh, with with some specific te technique founded uh, in in from our ancestors especially from china this, this specific type of rolling is very commonly used and produce the best quality of tea so if you're interested in that we can look it up and the last one is the flavor characteristic inherent in various tea partially depends on the type of roller used okay now the types of black tea in responsive of that means that different types of rollers we have talked about this black tea we have two types of black tea commonly found in the market orthodox and ctct we see in the picture the orthodox tea are the ones which are left dried as it is okay the wholeness of the leaf is and the wholeness of the leaf is the one which gives the the, the flavor of uh, in, when we are drinking a tea so this orthodox tea mm, is uh, without using a roller and ctct we can see that it in all steps of orthodox processing performed um, this machine uh, is not used okay so but in ctc we use some machine and we roll them into small tiny black balls and we when this orthodox tea is mainly used for black tea means when we, when we don't add milk and ctc is for having milk tea it produce more amount of uh, it, it gives more amount of that uh, which we call that um, chlorophyll to uh, polyphectinins that 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 black color pigment which is responsible okay so in the ctc when we use this roller we produce more black color okay more black pigmented color it form and so that is mainly used in milk tea now the basic advantage of ctct over orthodox tea let's mm -hmm. look at it and the appearance of tea leaf the tea leaves we see that in ctc it is uh, chop shredded minced with a rolling machine and it maintains the integrity of tea leaves that means it, it maintains the uniformity of the, as well as those bioactive compounds or whatever it is it is rolled in between so the appearance of the leaf is dif different from the orthodox tea leaves where the orthodox tea leaves are dried as it is okay as it is plucked now the machinery involved as it is plucked and also it is rolled with hand but not in a specific technique as much as rolled it, as much as it is, it is rolled in CTC, the machinery is involved in CTC as we know. Orthodox tea can be done, done manually, whereas CTC we need continuous rolling for a particular amount of time. So it involves machinery and also the flavor profile. The flavor is very one uh, dimensional. Mm distinctive character it has between ctc and orthodox uh, ctc is bold it's powerful and it's brightly coloring with a pungent astringency that bitterness orthodox orthodox tea because the leaves is not treated in the same way it doesn't produce the type of the color and the body which a tea leaves should have which a ctc has it okay now however ctc cannot produce the tremendous range of flavor and aroma which orthodox tea are loved for that means we see many very various kinds of flavored tea leaves in, the, in now in, in many um, tea producing uh, producing companies tea manufacturing companies have come up with different types of flavored tea vanilla tea chocolate tea many types of tea are there which cannot be done in ctc but can be done in orthodox the fourth one is fermentation it is also termed as oxidation that means here um, the main com the main reaction takes place that means um, the process of the, the process of breaking down the, cl the chlorophyll okay that which is the color pigment responsible and the, the broken it is broken down here and then tannins are also released during fermentation that tannins are the plant hormones that changes the color and the taste of tea now tea leaves are spreaded 
In fermentation process, they are spread in a 3 to 4 inches thick on a flat surface where there is a controlled humidity. Okay, that is very important. Controlled humidity as well as temperature. The climate can be controlled here and also we, we want a place where it's a bit darker in, in, in a dark room. So the humidity is uh, it's slightly shortened, shortened the saturation point. Saturation point is where the point uh, a substance no longer absorb water. So the humidity is controlled here. Okay, and then after that, uh, we see that optimum fermentation period is around two to six hours, depending upon the variety, the thickness, how much, how much uh, humidity, or how much, uh, how much uh, variety of the the variety of leaves also have a, a con contribution to the period so we cannot fix one particular period for fermentation and it is a tea producer who chooses the oxidation when to stop this process depending on upon the, the richness of flavor the taste and the color he wants he or she wants the um they chooses at what particular time this fermentation should end so mainly the optimum time is around two to six hours at the temperature of 21 to 27 the important changes during fermentation very important ones are the catechins are oxidized catechins are oxidized those are nat natural phenols and caffeine gets bound to polyphenols and brings stimulating character to the brew that means the caffeine which con which are contained in it it gets released okay so it gets uh, that it brings those those character comes out it plays out after we process after fermentation is performed then the typical tea flavoring are formed as we have mentioned those tannins and chlorophyll have broken down so those typical tea flavor also formed now the uh, the second last one is firing firing as we know is also called as drying this process is done to stop fermentation now those fermentation doesn't stop drastically or naturally at once it because it cannot stop unless and until you perform one operation okay those oxidation enzymatic breakdown everything will keep on occurring as unless and until you 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 don't process you don't put under this operation of firing or, or drying now the entrance chamber is kept very high around temperature of 93 degrees celsius and in the exit means after uh, after passing through that chamber for around 30 to 40 minutes nearly in the exit it, it, the temperature falls down to around 49 degrees celsius and here we can see the moisture of the tea leaves is brought down from uh, ha almost half that means it's 70 percent moisture uh, 65 percent moisture we have almost half we have brought it down withering that means it was containing around 30 percent now in firing we have brought it down to three to four percent moisture so that means it is safe for it is safe for uh, storage okay so at this firing in this firing process besides halting the fermentation process this firing also causes some caramelization to occur which is also responsible again for it the color of black tea now this black color of the tea develops due to the formation of now a few phytins from chlorophylls as earlier mentioned that means during per process of fermentation and also during the process of firing this continuous uh, formation of um, black color from chlorophyll to few phytins is taking place in three process so from rolling from in rolling and then in fermentation and also in firing now polyphenols binds with proteins and bring down the ast astringency here in firing it also um, th those polyphenols responsible for its bitterness for its for its drying property also binds with uh, it binds with the proteins here and then the final one which is does is that interaction of sugar and amino acids it results in the formation of uh, different types of flavoring now these are the types of firing then um, F f we can use we do in many ways first is the sun drying directly open it and uh, expose it to sun drying which are done in that that is a traditional way but nowadays everyone uh, is using mechanized form which is like a pan fried baked air drying as we see different types of tray dryer and to bring down the moisture of three percent we need them some types of mechanical dryer for uniform drying and for a total stop of oxidation process from this uh, from these processes we can have around three varieties of three basic varieties of tea that is green tea or long tea and black tea now we can see one by one that the the processing of the green shoots or the processing line especially in the fermentation process is mainly responsible for getting these three types of tea that is green oolong and black tea green tea is not fermented okay the, here the perp in in green tea uh, they are heated immediately after picking in order to prevent fermentation instead in uh, 
in, in it skips all the process of um, it, it skips off the all the process of withering rolling okay and also fermentation and directly after picking they are make uh, they are they 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 dry it or they fire it and then they roll it after firing they roll it and then it, and they pack it and green tea is as simple as that and for olong tea it goes through the same process as black tea except that the fermentation is process is substantially shorter so the olong tea means same process like black tea the, the normal process which we have spoke about those six process but here the fermentation process is slightly shorter now black tea withered rolled and special machines to, to partially release their natural juice left to ferment in a climate controlled environment and then over dry black tea we all know that that no, normal process which we have been talking about now there's another type of tea which is also found that is a white tea it doesn't fall under the basic varieties but we have to know that there's a one one type of tea found in the market which is white tea it is a mini which is a mini minimally processed tea and there is just drying performed after picking no fermentation and no other procedures is performed here here steam or uh, steam or fired into inactivate polyphenols oxidase and then it's dried okay it the the process only involved here is to inactivate polyphenol oxidase and then dry it and packed now the final one is grading and packaging in grading it improves the appearance consistency of tea leaves and uh, tea leaf size and taste that the dried product is clean and sorted into various grades of tea commerce as means it's in in the market we have four types of tea leaves okay uh, which is whole tea leaf grade broken grade fanning and dust now the broken grade compromises the small size the small size sifted from the bulk or those obtained by cutting the longer leaf grades to desirable sizes but the broken grains what we have broken grain grade what we should remember is it has the strongest taste among all of those grades and these graded leaves are also further categorized depending upon size as orange pq pq and sochung okay in the figure produced here we can see this uh pq or uh, we can pq the flowery pq or the normal pq are um, a bit uh, the normal leaves or we can say the small ones the small but the new the newest leaf the flower pq we can say and also the, the the other young ones the other young leaves found in the little bit bottom of the plant and orange pq this orange pq is one of the finest grade and the first searching second searching is also at the at the end of the plant okay so the the higher that means the larger the size the, the larger the size that means little bit lower quality the smaller the size of the tea leaf the higher the quality packed in paper after that grading is done if we have the we have to do packaging and it's it is packed in paper cartons ply boxes any type of any type of uh, packaging material where, where where we can reduce moisture moisture this one transfer okay so the moisture content increases beyond six to seven percent as we know in firing we reduce it up to three percent if it increases beyond six to seven percent in while while handling and the, the, uh, while grading those tea leaves we should subject the tea leaves to second fire before packaging again that means we should always maintain the temp moisture content below three percent before packaging we can see the whole production line harvesting withering rolling roll breaking which is done manually fermenting drying grading and packaging now the final topic here is quality parameters of tea only three slides left and the quality parameters of tea we can see the first one let's talk about it tea flavins tea rubins high polymerized substance tea, total liquid color and total soluble solids these five um, these five compounds or these five uh, characteristics are responsible for checking the quality of our uh, of our tea now tf the theoflavins have a direct correlation with the quality and price of our tea okay it, it it grieves or it contributes to the briskness and brightness of the tea liquor so uh, we should see that as tf pro progressively increase uh, till an optimum uh, fermentation time the period at which the maximum quality is observed so at the, up till the optimum we reach the optimum fermentation time the uh, and up till where the and, and slowly the tf is also increasing right during fermentation so at that uh, we we get the maximum quality or the highest quality of tea 
um, as we increase DF. But what we have to properly balance out, we have to be very careful, is that the uh, DR, which is the um, theorobigins, has to be 10 to 12 times as that of TF. That means DR has to be higher than TF, so as to get the maximum uh, or the highest quality of tea leaves. And TR are that theorobigins are complex condensation of oxidized catechins with TF. So together with HPS, those highly pyramized substance, TR increases the color, mouthfeel, and body of the tea liquor. That means mm, uh, with those highly pyramized substances, that means those substances which are polymerized, which are broken down, though we, together with that, TR increases the uh, the whole outlook, the flavor, and the aroma of our total tea. Now, with high levels of the high levels of TR indicates over fermentation. That also has to be taken care, and also lower level also again it shows it's under fermented. So there there should be we should maintain a proper balance now the second quality uh, testing parameter is the properties of caffeine here caffeine it is um, it plays an important role in the quality of tea as well as, uh, and also it requires minimum stipulation caffeine is relatively stable molecule and is direct stimulant of the central nervous system as we have spoken about it together with tf it imparts briskness to the tea liquor caffeine level increases during processing Okay, and high levels of caffeine indicate is a good leaf standard. So that means now, yeah, unlike TF or TR, we, um, we we don't need to balance the quantity. Caffeine means the higher the caffeine, the better the tea it is. Okay, but caffeine decreases with the maturity of the crop. Should that also while harvesting, we should know that uh, the more mature the tea leaf is, the caffeine also decreases. Now the water extract or TSS, total soluble solids, has a direct influence on the cuppage. That means the the uh, the taste when we are drinking the values of tss indicates a better quality of the raw, ma raw materials that means higher value of tss indicates there is a better quality of the raw materials the final one is brick brickness and color in the indices here bri brickness in this is a percentage ratio of tf theoflavonoids to tf plus caf and the normal range from and the normal range for the south indian ctct is above 23 where the color index is a as a, is the, which is the percentage of TF to TR plus HPS and the normal range for the, the South Indian CTCT is from 5 to 11. So maintaining this type of uh, ratio and this type of index, index is also very important when we speak about the quality of tea. And tea have a maximum TF and balance TRTF ratio of 10 to 12 with optimum level of brightness and quality and which defines that with high TF and a balance ratio, we have a good quality of tea. So these three are important uh, qu uh, qu qu measures to characterize the quality of tea. Now we have come to the end. I want you to visit the reference of um, one website, which is a tea board of India, because I was I have spoke about grading and I cannot um, include everything in this slide. So if you want to know more about it, you can visit this website, tea board and their official website, teaboard.gov.in, and also two reference books which are from Banerjee and Panda, as I have mentioned in the slides. I want you to all refer these books in case you're interested. Thank you.